The jaws were derived from the first uh, gill arches in the ancestral jawless fish. The upper jaw would be composed uh, of elements of the dermatocranium, such as the maxillary and the premaxillary in the front of the jaw. These would be present in early fish and continue uh, through later lineages, although in humans the premaxillary and maxillary fuse to make one bone. The nasal bones are also uh, very old bones present in uh, bony fish which have persisted till today. Originally, the orbit was surrounded by a number of small bones, underneath by the lacrimal and jugal bones, what we call the zygomatic, and above by the prefrontal, postfrontal, and postorbital bones. These three bones above the orbit would eventually be lost in the lineage which would lead to mammals, and when the ancestors of mammals lost the prefrontal, postfrontal, and postorbital bones, then the opening for the orbit fused with the synapsid opening for the jaw muscles. The lacrimal bone is retained in mammals, but it became shorter and shorter. Originally it reached the tip of the snout near the nasal cavity, and then as it got shorter it was confined to the orbit. The jugal bone became the zygomatic as it developed uh, a process to touch the frontal bone, forming a post-orbital um, uh, bar to surround the eye socket with bone. The sarcopterygian fish move the posterior nostril from their snout to the roof of their mouths so that it became an internal nostril and they could then breathe through their noses. There were originally a number of bones on the roof of the mouth or palate and many had teeth, although these teeth would be gradually reduced except for those on the maxillary and premaxillary bones. As mammals developed a very high metabolism, they needed constant oxygen supplies so they needed to breathe even when eating and so they formed a hard palate. Two bones from the roof of the mouth, the maxillary and palatine, fused together in the midline so that these internal nostrils were moved to the back of uh, the oral cavity and so that there was a separation between the mouth and the nasal cavity so that they could breathe even when there was food in the mouth. Although the mammalian lower jaw is composed of only one bone, the dentary. Ancestrally, it was composed of many, many bones. Over evolution, especially during the synapsid uh, reptile evolution, the dentary bone, here depicted in blue, became larger and larger until it occupied the entire lower jaw, including a process for muscle attachment and developed a new joint with the temporal bone, so that when mammals open and close their jaws, there is a joint between the temporal uh, bones and the dentary of the mandible. Most of the other bones were gradually lost, but uh, three are retained in mammals. Originally, there was a jaw joint between the bones here depicted in red and yellow, the quadrate and the articular. As these bones became smaller and smaller and were no longer used as a jaw joint. They were modified so that they would become middle ear bones. Uh, this way, reptiles only have one middle ear bone derived from the stapes in the back of the skull, whereas mammals have three because they add these small red and yellow uh, bones as well. Uh, the pink bone here, the angular, was modified uh, so that it is also included inside the temporal bone, but it supports the eardrum. So the pink, red, and yellow bones uh, were modified from their original uh, roles as jaw bones and now uh, function in the middle ear, which is inside the temporal bone of mammals.